Hey, have you ever seen the TV show BattleBots? You know, the one with the fighting robots? Well, I've been diving into that sort of stuff over the past year or so, mainly through my friends who have been doing this for a few years. And then I made new friends through my school's combat robotics club, and now it's partially become my new social circle. Take a look. No, I didn't build that big one. I built that one. This robot is designed to compete in plastic ant weight competitions, where you are limited to a weight of one pound and can only use 3D printed materials, with some obvious exceptions like fasteners, electronics, bearings, and motors. The whole point of this is to minimize the barrier to entry, as 3D printing eliminates a lot of the difficulties in materials and manufacturability. Also, the robots in the show are 250 pounds and way too expensive, complicated, and dangerous for my electrical engineer brain. That being said, there's still a lot going on with this design, and to understand it, we must first understand the 144P RTX off half bit, nay, quarter bit, nay, wrist game version from which it is derived. Alright, let's set the scene. It's a Thursday night, towards the end of the spring 2023 semester. I had just finished my undergraduate capstone, where I hacked an FPGA with lasers. By the way, this is a plug, please watch that video. So I decided to celebrate by doing something fun with my friends. I downloaded SolidWorks to learn CAD by designing a plastic ant weight to compete that Sunday at the competition that my school's combat robotics club hosts a few times per year. All I knew is two things. I wanted a vertical spinner and it needed to be fully invertible, mainly because at the time I felt that the answer to what do you do when upside down should be there is no upside down. I started by furiously looking up ant weight combat robot tutorial and when I saw this shot of this video, I said, yeah, I think I know what to do now. And I got started. Also, most combat robots use off-the-shelf transmitters and receivers used for airplanes and such. I did not have such electronics, but I did have a Wii Remote and an ESP32. Also, I thought such a control scheme was funny, because it is. I'll spare you the details, but that was something which ended poorly for various reasons. Here are your files, good sir. This thing is swa swa giant. I am not gonna print it just cause I can't figure out if it's the right scale. Oh Jesus Christ, I am slicing it and I see what you mean. It's all over, my computer is dead. The battery killed my computer. Holy swap. Sorry dude. My plan today is to first see if my SSD is still fine and I maybe want to see the idiot move at some point. Also if you bring your robot we can totally put a receiver in it right now as well if you want. However, I did assemble a working robot, somehow. When asked to name it, I, in a state of stress, give the knee-jerk response of, Who cares? And my mate, who was making the bracket, said, sure, that could work. I had one fight. fight, robot, fight. Took off someone's wheel. <laughs> severely cracked my chassis and left to deal with my now dead computer. However, through all of this hell, I was hooked onto the sport. And over the summer, I set out to design a V2 under the motto, Spin Up Before Sign Up. Because I wasn't going through that again. <laughs> Given much more time, you'd expect V2 to be a much more polished design. And it, in fact, was. Some of the changes include... Somebody told me what rake angle is and how it actually helps you hit your opponent. And I felt my brain visibly expand that day. The weapon motor has wires going to them. The weapon should not be able to hit them. There is a dedicated hole for a power switch, which means I don't have to do this to my top plate in order to safely turn it off and on. Also, it's the O in who cares. <laughs> and most importantly, I printed the chassis with more walls in order to make it actually durable. I competed in December of 2023, and it actually did quite well. Here's the rundown. Fight. My first fight was against Bird Strike, a robot that, at least in theory, is supposed to be able to translate by speeding up and down the motors, much like Droopy does at NHRL. 
it being my first real fight, I didn't really know what I was doing, so I kinda just sent it. By the time I made contact, their weapon motors actually managed to hit speed, which, when you're fighting this kind of robot, is a very bad thing. But other than getting a little piece chipped off, I took the hit just fine. By the time they were able to recover that, they lost all momentum in their weapon, at which point I managed to get some hits until they were KO'd. I'm gonna need to see, oh, oh, keep going. Can we see some motion? Yeah, first strike. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And that's the match. It goes to Kyle. Oh my god. I am so happy that it worked. Dude, there is wires and bullet connectors across the box. Okay. I managed to weld that piece back on in time for my next fight against Rex, a robot that I was quite scared of due to their forks, which can get under me. Though I managed to power through them and kept flipping them upside down again. Whoa. And again. No. <laughs> and again. Hey. And again. <laughs> Also, snipe one of said forks, which they let me keep as a trophy. The next fight was against Flytrap, which was another drum spinner similar to mine, except this one had a larger and faster weapon motor. This meant going weapon on weapon will not work in my favor. Like that, you doofus. However, I was able to outmaneuver them and hit them to the point that their battery was exposed, which, for safety reasons, counted as an automatic tap out, securing my spot in the semifinals. Oh, also, they nipped the same piece that Birdstrike nipped, so I had to weld that on again. Oh, oh my god! Oh. Alright! Your winner, who cares? <laughs> The semi-final fight was against Uppercut, the champion of the previous Antweight competition. About 20 seconds in, their weapon is damaged to the point of losing balance, and then I get an amazing hit, and I'm dead. The Wii Remote lost connection, and when it came back, I had weapon, but no drive. And just like that, I was KO'd. Hit him. I was quite unsatisfied with that ending, so me and the builder of the other robot that lost in semifinals agreed to do an unofficial third place fight. However, oh. yeah, that wasn't happening. The builder of Jinx, who actually beat Uppercut in the finals, agreed to do a grudge match and give who cares the send off it deserved. I actually wanted to make a Twin Beast version, but it never panned out because I didn't have the time. All I have to say for that is this unfinished CAD. However, I did have a spare weapon that I never used, so when the next Antweight competition rolled around, I decided to enter, despite not having a working solution to the electrical issues that caused me to lose. However, I did miraculously get it working for one fight. Three, two, one, fight robots, fight. A very close one that I ended up winning by a judge's decision, mainly because I was able to knock them upside down, to which they struggled to flip back over. Oh, and you'll never believe what they managed to knock off. That's like a total combined of one screw. It's two halves. Towards the end, my drive motors started to go, and in the middle of swapping them out, the electronics issues came back worse than ever, and I couldn't fix it. Almost. Don't worry, I did too. Oh well. Overall, I'm quite satisfied with how it did, and I learned so much in the process. And I guess this chassis will live to see another competition. 
somehow. But until that time comes, it will be retired to become a display piece on my dresser alongside the OG. Okay, that's good, I guess.